Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be implementing a queue using a linked list. So to get started, we're gonna create two classes. The first class is more of a helper class. So we're gonna create a class called node. And if you worked with linked list before, you know a node essentially has two main components. It has the data and the data can be whatever you want. In our case, we're gonna make it an int and it has a pointer to the next node. Now here, you can see that we have our one argument constructor. We pass in our data, we set our data, and then we set next equal to null. Now, if you wanna make data and the next pointer private and then use getters and setters, you're more than welcome to do that. But to make this example, as simplistic as possible, we're gonna make everything public. So you can see here that we've created a class called Q linked list implementation. Now here, you can see that we have two private data members. We have front, which is going to point to the front of the queue, and we have rear, which is just going to point to the back of the queue. Coming down here, you can see that we have our no argument constructor, and this is just going to initialize both front and rear to null. And this is just to symbolize that our queue is empty. Now from here, let's move on to the NQ method. So you can see here that we're passing in the data that we're going to NQ onto our queue. So here you can see that we're going to create a new node called N and that's going to be NQ'd onto our queue. And if we move down here, First, we need to check to see if our queue is empty. If it's empty, we're going to make both rear and front point to N. Since N is the only node within our queue, it is both the front and rear node within our queue. Otherwise, we're gonna come down here, and that just means that our queue is not empty. So we're going to make our current rear's next pointer point to the newly created node, and then we're gonna advance rear to point to N since n is the new last node within our queue. So now let's give an example of the nq method in action. Let's say I want nq1 onto our queue. So first we create a new node based on the data being passed in. In this case, it's gonna be one. Then we come down here and we check to see if rear is equal to null. It is. So in this case, what we're gonna do is set both rear and front to both point to n. So now let's give another example. Let's say I wanna nq2 onto our queue. First, we're going to create a new node based on data being passed in. Then we're gonna come down here. Is rear equal to null? The answer to that is no. So we move down to the else statement. So first we make rear's next pointer point to the newly created node and then we advance rear to point to n, since n is now the last node within our queue. So now let's move on to the DQ method. So first we're going to check to see whether or not our queue is empty. If it's empty, we're just going to print that it's an empty queue and we're gonna return minus one. Otherwise, we're gonna come down here and create a temporary pointer that points to the front of the queue. This is so we could delete that later. Next, we're going to say the data that's in front of our queue, and this is going to be what's going to get returned. So now if we come down here, we could check to see if rear is equal to front. If this is true, that means there's only one node within our queue. And since we're dequeuing that node from our queue, we're just gonna set both front and rear to equal to null. And that's just to symbolize that our queue is empty just like we did within our one argument constructor. And if we were to come down here, that means there's more than one node within our queue. And all we're gonna do is advance our front pointer to point to the next node. And finally, if we were to come down here, we delete the previous first node within our queue, and then we return the data that was previously in front of our queue. So now let's take a look at the DQ method in action. So if I was to call the DQ method now, first, we're gonna to check to see if the queue is empty. It's not. So we're gonna move down here. We create a temporary pointer to the front of the queue. 
And then we say the data within that node to a temporary variable. Next, we check to see if the front is equal to the rear. It's not. So we move on down to the else statement. Now from here, we're just going to advance our front pointer to point to the next node within our queue. And last but not least, we're going to delete the previous first node within our queue. And then we're just going to return the data. So if we were to call the DQ method one more time, first we check to see if our queue is empty. It's not, so we move down here. We create a temporary pointer to point to whatever front is pointing to. Then we say the data that's at the current front of our queue. Then we come down here. Is front pointing to what rear is pointing to? Yes, it is. So we set both front and rear both to null. Then from here, we delete what temp is pointing to. And finally, we return the data. And last but not least, we're going to need a destructor. And that's because we dynamically create each node that we add within our queue. And this destructor is essentially the same as the singly linked list destructor. So I already went over that in my singly linked list destructor. So if you want to take a look at how that works, you could take a look at that video. So that pretty much wraps it up for our queue linked list implementation.